Hey friends, welcome to the Swing My Heart podcast. Come join me, your host Nicole, for some hope-filled conversations about heartfelt entertainment that makes your heart swing. Hey hearties, welcome to the Swing My Heart podcast. I'm your host, Nicole. And welcome to the Hardy's Hotline. I'm your host, Cammie, the Hooked Hardy. We are joining forces today. Yes, we are for a very fun mystery movie. Nellie Knows Mysteries, A Fatal Engagement, of course. (laughs) Yes, starring Kevin Smith as Michael Hogan and Pascal Hutton as Nellie Parker. It was written by Katherine Wagner and directed by David Strasser. Local advice columnist with knowledge of the town's secrets gets entangled in a murder case, clashing with the detective leading the investigation. Of course. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Kimmy, what were your hot takes on this movie? So your quick initial thoughts yeah. about it. So- First thing is that they named Kevin's character Michael Hogan. Yes. Um, they that did. may that may mean something to everybody. It may not, but Michael Hogan is the actor who played Kevin or Nathan's father on When Calls the Heart. Yes, Archie. Archie Grant. And he suffered a Mm -hmm. very debilitating blow and he was having bleeding on the brain and he was in the Mm -hmm. hospital for a very long time and what I know is that he is out of the hospital now Mm -hmm. but he's in no shape to go Mm -hmm. back to work so I don't know if we're going to see him in any more projects and so just then I I don't even know if this was done on purpose but it seemed like it and yeah for for them to just pay homage to Michael Hogan that way and Michael Hogan is one of the few people who has been on When Calls the Heart and Sign Sealed Sealed. yes (laughs) yes he played the military guy he played the captain hopper and hopper that's right to whom it may concern yeah big pile of government red red tape tape. (laughs) yes that shane was saying no don't don't give him don't don't give him the form yes i couldn't remember his character's name but i knew he was in that episode i just watched it yesterday so that's (laughs) don't take away my postables card no, no, not this time. But I will take away your postables card if you can't tell me who else from Sign Sealed Delivery. Okay, I will get to that in a minute, but why don't you share more of your hot takes? <laughs> All right, fine, if we're going to do this by the book. <laughs> um, What I loved was it gave kind of a campy vibe. It gave a very old-fashioned 50s 60s that kind of vibe I mean I was looking at Pascal's wardrobe it was Mm -hmm. very 50s and 60s and just cute oh my gosh and then they're in um I don't were they in the diner uh that Helen owned when they were having the milkshakes I believe so different spot but it did look different but it yeah, could be the same. So I don't know if they're in the same spot but when they're having milkshakes you know you've got the whole 50s go to the drugstore vibe and there were even what looked like I don't know if it was I didn't have my glasses on but it looked like there were vinyl records on the wall as decoration and yeah. then the music there was all there were all different mm-hmm. types of music with but they were all old-fashioned vibes I think I heard yeah. some 20s music in there yeah. and then definitely some 50s and 60s and so there was just a yeah. this cute old-fashioned vibe and I yes. just I loved that that was that yeah. was really great yeah me too I got 
a lot of Danny and Sandy from Grace vibes in that scene when they're drinking the milkshakes. <laughs> a lot of people said that on Twitter. It's not just me. Danny and oh man, I would not have picked Danny and Sandy. I mean, I guess it could work, but it could, yeah. I mean, Michael didn't, or should I say Nikki? Poor guy, couldn't get away from that ridiculous nickname. But yeah, he didn't he didn't strike me as a greaser. He just had a leather jacket on. So Yeah, that's true. I thought that the chemistry and the dynamics with the cast was great. Well, of I course. mean, we're talking about Kevin and Pascal here. Yes. So we knew yeah. that. And, you know, it wasn't just, you could tell that they were being a little flirty, the characters. But even when they weren't being flirty, they just work so well. They do. They yeah. work so well together. Yeah. And so, yeah, I knew that that would not be the problem. Yeah. And even the rest of the cast, I thought, worked oh, really yeah. very well together. Yeah. Yeah. The banter, of course, between Kevin and Pascal was fantastic as always. Wardrobe. We already <laughs> talked about that on point. I want some of that wardrobe. Me too. I, I want that green jacket. <laughs> I love the green jacket too. Yes. And I enjoyed seeing all the familiar faces from Sign Sealed and When Calls the Heart. We've got Jill Morrison, who plays Helen, who owns the diner. And she's Aaron, in both. Yes. Aaron and Kate Craven, who played Connor and Paige Woolley. Aaron was Elliot Garvey in season two of When Calls the Heart. And yep. Governor Ryan Hallett in Sign Sealed from the Heart. Very good. And Kate Craven, she was Eleanor Roberts in When Calls the Heart season five. Mm -hmm. And Terry Ingram in Chesapeake Shores season three. That's not signed, sealed, delivered. <laughs> no, it's still Hallmark though. <laughs> so I had to mention it. And I find it funny that Kate's character on When Calls was also involved with Kevin's character. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Yes, the uh, silent partner's wife appears. Yes, yep. Indeed. And last one, Emma Pedersen, who played Jody Day in this movie. She was Nikki in One in a Million. You missed one. I missed one? Who did I miss? You missed Sarah Gray. Dahlia oh, yes. Chatters. That's right. Yes. She played Carson Shepard's sister in law, the nice one. Cindy Busby oh, is the mean that's one. Right. <laughs> but yes. She plays the sister in law who comes and needs brain surgery. That's right. Yep. Yes. And so yeah, she was she was She's great. great too. Yeah. And I would love a sequel to this movie to see where the story goes next. Well, yeah, I mean, and there are there are pairings and casts that work, and there are pairings and casts that don't. This one worked. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree. This, this one worked. And just, I mean, what was it? Somebody said that they got Scooby-Doo vibes for, from this. Because I can see that a little I bit. I can totally see that. When Nellie catches the newspaper yep. at the beginning and the end of the film, just, mm -hmm. pull, just throwing that tiny little cute thing in. And yep. her being an advice columnist, very much like Rosemary and One Calls yes. the Heart. You know, they're doing things that they're good at. And mm -hmm. I'll be completely honest, I didn't quite care for the mystery as much. I see but I loved watching them and I loved yeah. watching the surroundings yeah. being built and being yeah. established. So for yeah. no other for no other reason than just wanting to see where they can take this storyline. Yes, I want a sequel. Yeah. But you know, there are other there are other reasons besides yeah. that. But that's the big one is I would yeah. love to see where they go with this yes me too 
So why don't we just get into that mystery with our suspects and clues? Suspects and clues. Okay. Yes. So Paige. Yep. So I went back and forth on Paige. Yeah, First me I too. thought that she was because of the pen mm -hmm. thing, but yes. immediately I said, nope, too easy. That And mm -hmm. it's in a mystery film or a mystery yeah. story, it's always the most obvious ones that are not Mm -hmm. the, too easy the yeah. actual the actual murderers so I said no too easy and then when she came back and started threatening Nelly I went wait a sec <laughs> hold on here me too and then she used the letter opener that was mm -hmm. very reminiscent of sign seal delivered <laughs> making yes. a big deal about the about the letter opener and threatening yep. with letter openers, shall we say? But mm -hmm. uh, then she's saying, "Don't talk to the detective." I'm like, loud enough for the detective to hear you in the background. Great, yeah. you, that that's really smart. But I thought, wait a second, hold on. And then she breaks down crying, and I thought, okay, yeah, no, he's not. And then her husband walks in, and he actually is. I'm like, Hold on, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so that kept my head spinning. Mm -hmm. So from the scene at the end, you know, when she's talking, we hear that her husband, Connor, is a banker, but also a shopaholic. Their bank accounts are all drained. She used it as a chance to get out of debt. She met one of Connor's clients who said he'd cut her in for a half the difference if he got her uncle's house for 80,000 under market value. She thought it was low risk. Blake overheard her talking with the buyer in the yard. So she had to cut him in and she convinced him to keep his mouth shut for half her share. So basically Blake was blackmailing her. Yeah. So, you know, the victim isn't exactly squeaky clean in all of this. <laughs> no, not at all. Mm -mm. So. Dahlia, what did you think about Dahlia? I did not think that she did it. Mm -mm, no. I thought I thought that maybe she was a little on the sketchy side. Mm -hmm. But I didn't think that she would have would have committed the murder. She was she was too much in love with Blake, mm -hmm. even though he seemed way, way yeah. beneath her. She yeah. she seemed very much in love with him. And yeah, I I didn't think that she had done it. Yeah, I'm glad she didn't. But yeah. usually in a case like this, when there is a significant other, the significant other that is not the one that died is the one that is right. a suspect usually. and if they're if they're not the murderer because sometimes it has been uh yeah. but if they're not the murderer then they are the first suspect <laughs> so <laughs> they're always the first suspect yes which is understandable because you never know i mean love does be a crime of things yep crime of passion yep while we're on relationships i just want to yeah. i want to go really quick to fred okay to nelly's fiance fred i yeah. thought when she started telling the story i thought that she was going to say that he dumped her i and did too. yeah you know she and she had just chosen to keep her heart guarded mm -hmm. but be happy yeah. in every other aspect of her life mm -hmm. and then she said and he died in a car crash I went oh oh this was not a bad breakup this mm -hmm. was heartbreak to the max yeah Ugh. 
that was my favorite scene in the movie when they were at the diner having milkshakes and talking yeah that that was probably the place where we saw nelly the most vulnerable Mm -hmm. because everywhere else even though that is her personality she was still performing Mm -hmm. you know she was on she she was she had to be on and constantly be quick and and had to do the bonkers (laughs) she had to be quick thinking and she had to do all of this stuff and she had Mm to uh, keep detective hogan on his toes but that was the one scene where we saw her slow down Mm -hmm. and we saw her not put on her persona but dig a little deep and yeah that's one of the greatest parts of watching movies like this with a really bubbly character Mm -hmm. is when they give you those scenes to really go inside and the uh and the character themselves gets really introspective so now I want to now in the sequel I want to hear more about michael hogan's divorce i want to i want to know what that's all me too yeah so back to our suspects yes back to the suspects wang i think i pronounced that right he was acting a little suspicious i thought that he was hitting on nelly (laughs) And that's why I thought she was avoiding him. (laughs) Actually, I did too at first, but then that scene when she runs into him at the scene of the crime, he was acting very suspicious. Oh, definitely. But I I was just like, are you following her? Uh, Do you want to date that badly? But then you find out that he and Grace are are married. Yeah, and so, so he's just wanting to confront her about the kitten (laughs) yep yep and peter was played by the wonderful nelson wong yeah who has been in a ton of hallmark movies yeah yeah we love nelson yes and grace grace played by sunita yeah she's she's been all over yes Uh, so i wondered at one point i wondered if maybe grace was a suspect simply because she was so out of it you know she was so removed from the mystery that i thought we're gonna find some tidbit of how she's connected to blake and Mm -hmm. you know she's gonna be an old girlfriend or something Mm -hmm. because she was the most removed but Mm -hmm. nope i was wrong And may I also point out that one of the biggest challenges was I had my daughter talking in my ear the entire first time I watched it. And she she was like, who's that, mom? Who's that? Oh, mommy, did she do it? Honey, I don't know. (laughs) I've never seen this movie. So yeah, I'm sitting there trying to watch it. Okay. Yeah. No more first time watching. No more first time viewings of a mystery with you in the room. Uh-uh. <laughs> yes, unless she life. wants to watch too. Yeah, she wants to watch too, but I'm gonna have to watch it without her. Figure out what's going on and then watch it with her, so I don't miss anything. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, with Peter, what he wanted to get back was a watch that Blake one off of grace the friday before he went now was grace at the poker game or did peter yes. just take the watch grace was at the poker game i believe okay, yes. I, miss, I missed that one yes and he went to see blake and explained that the watch was worth too much for the game but he wouldn't hear it and said he won fair and square blake that is yes gambling Rumpels. is never a good idea <laughs> It's just, you always don't do it. Trouble. <laughs> always get in trouble with gambling. 
Yep. Gambling is a no go. Yeah. For me. All right. So, what did you think of Jody? Jody was interesting. What about you? What did you think of her? I. They did a good job with yes, her. Yes, they did. Because you didn't know. Because she mm-hmm. wasn't the first suspect. And, you know, there have been those times where a person is spoken to and they sound pretty innocent. So mm-hmm. the detective moves on and then it comes back to bite them and they get caught in the lie. So, mm-hmm. you know, and she was giving some, she was giving off some very suspicious vibes. Yeah, and she was. The, the facial expressions. She, Emma was killing it mm-hmm. with the facial expressions. And so I was, yeah, I was very curious. Wait a minute. What's this? What's the, and the picture of her in the dress? Yeah. That had to have been one of the most embarrassing moments, if not the most embarrassing for Michael in the entire case, because probably, yeah, she, she is not the type who would wear a dress. I mean, she's a carpenter and she, and she dresses accordingly. She's in overalls Mm -hmm. all the time and, and all of that. And then, you know, this is a very provocative picture of you Detective, have you ever lost a bet? And I went, oh, no. I thought that Jody was hiding a more feminine side to her, but nope. Yeah. Yep. But Jody is ruled out pretty quickly, I would Very, say. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty early. Yeah. Rumple Snide. Yes. He was a little suspicious in the beginning. But then he was also ruled out pretty quickly. Yeah, I mean, holding a gun in the face of our protagonist is going <laughs> to... But yeah. I think that's what made it a little too obvious for me. I'm like, yes. no, it's never going to be the grumpy old person who's actually doing the threats. <laughs> no, nope. And he tells Nellie that Blake is no friend of his, which the first time I watched this, I was like, eh. That could be reason for... That's motive. <laughs> Motive, yes. Yeah, that's motive when you when you hate somebody that much. Yes. And he's talking about how he heard angry shouting at 10 p.m. And then at 11, the light went on at the workshop, which shines into his window. But he that was, was just... very upset about that. Mm-hmm. The motion sensor. Right. On. Yeah. And it kind of made me laugh when... You know, after he's talking about how it was the motion sensor that went on and Mm -hmm. how Blake trips it every time he goes out to his workshop. You know, they're talking about intruders and he's like rats, rabbits, slugs, snakes, you. You. (laughs) And now he's like, okay, (laughs) moving on. Well, and now he's already feeling very bad remember when yeah. she crosses the crime tape forgive me for trespassing in it. <laughs> so she's already feeling terrible yeah. but yes. her curiosity gets the better of her and then she gets a gun stuck in her face and then she gets insulted yeah so poor nelly yeah oh my goodness so in the absence of sarah i have to bring this up the okay. murder board. Yep. I the love murder board. The murder board is always Sarah's favorite. She loves yes. murder boards. So I have to bring this up. And okay, can I just say that that was probably the worst location ever for a murder board? <laughs> right in the middle of the office. That- yeah. <laughs> that Nellie and Fiona work in and it is at the Babelton that I don't think that's a coincidence that the town is called Babelton I don't think we're talking about babbling brooks (laughs) clever I see what you did there thank you so we have a murder board 
based mm-hmm. on Nellie's speculations. Yeah. I, I won't I won't call it evidence because <laughs> so yeah. we have a murder board in the middle of an office of Babbleton magazine. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Babbleton Life magazine. Yeah. With all of the employees around, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, working as a background actor, it's made me a lot more observant of background actors. Mm-hmm. And nobody in the office was kind of eyeing the murder board suspiciously or curious or curiously. Yeah. And I went, no way. Sorry, not true to life. If that thing was on a bulletin board inside, mm-hmm. inside an office, there is People. no way that everyone would stick to their own desk and yeah. find their own business. Uh-uh. Yeah. People would be looking. Crowded around it. Yes. I think the better option would be like, Goldie and Marla in Goldie's home. Like when they had the murder board at her house and not in a public space. Bad. Her office. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, oh man. Because yeah, that that was funny. I mean, that, yes, that's where... Was. Because you know that people yeah. who are writing this you know that they aren't going to be that unobservant. No. You know that they know that people would be crowded around it. So yeah. it's kind of part of the joke. It's part of the, the surroundings and the vibe mm-hmm. to, to make it more campy, you know? Yeah. And because I think that was the vibe they were going for was a mm-hmm. little on the campy side. So yes. yeah. So yeah, I think that that was, I think that that was mostly for laughs to put it right in the middle of the office of yeah. the Bolton Life magazine, but yep. still. <laughs> yes. Yep. Agreed. And I did think it was kind of funny when Nellie was trying to hide the board from Michael. <laughs> <clears throat> kind of like Goldie and Marla hiding the board from Tom. Yeah, Goldie and Marla doing this whole number, you know. <laughs> And Tom's just like, <laughs> anyway, huh, wrong mystery. Back to Nelly knows Connor. Connor. Yeah, we have gotten to the culprit. The culprit. Okay. First word that came to my mind when I saw him for the first time on screen. It's a toss-up between wuss and nerd. <laughs> yeah. Because he was acting at, like a very weak man. And, yeah. and then, you know, very odd behavior for a banker that he wouldn't... I mean, I can see his point that he wouldn't want to gamble for money because that's what he works with all day. Mm-hmm. But ducks collectible ducks yeah no what you know, and just and then you know she says he's a banker but he's a shopaholic and i went oh well, that tracks because i mean look at all of those worthless statues with his collection and i mean and he says well they're worth xyz and then sell them for xyz or better yet don't buy them for xyz you know (laughs) but yeah he came off as a very weak man Mm -hmm. and then you know just not at all what i expected to see him start threatening nelly and his own wife Mm -hmm. i that i was not expecting i thought that I thought that maybe Paige was going to reveal that she was in on it, Mm -hmm. you know, that she acts all innocent for Nellie's benefit, or she goes in to try to figure Mm -hmm. out what Nellie knows. And then it Mm -hmm. turns out that she's in on it with him, but then no, he, uh, 
he grabs his wife and sticks the gun in her gut and says she's gonna die Mm -hmm. oh wow okay yeah so he was one of the last to see blake alive and one of the first to know about his murder when peter was banking with him and received a call from jody Mm -hmm. which was a little suspicious yeah i just (laughs) and then i I couldn't quite grasp how he fit into all of that because blake was blackmailing Paige. yeah so did he just kill blake because he was blackmailing connor's wife it's always possible i know that's what i was trying to figure out i couldn't Mm -hmm. figure out his exact motive was did he somehow get mixed up in all of this or did he not want everybody knowing about what a spender he was and how much in debt he was or it could be i i and then you know when when nelly's putting it together i'm like wait 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 hold on what so that that was the part Mm -hmm. i mean it makes sense that connor would be the murderer but i couldn't quite I couldn't mm-hmm. quite comprehend what his exact motive was. Yeah. It, that that part was kind of glossed over. So yeah, that that was the part that was tricky for me. Yeah, and then when he's talking to Michael and Nellie outside his and Paige's house, when he's mm-hmm. like, "I'm not acting suspicious." When you say that, you're acting suspicious. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, when you have to tell somebody that you're not doing something, usually means you are. So acting suspicious, yes. And he would be, you know, the very fact that I saw him as a nerd or a wuss or, you know, somebody who was just kind of quietly living his life, you know, that makes him... That makes him prime meat, (laughs) prime material for being the murderer in a mystery story yep and he didn't know about the play that Paige apparently went to and thought she was sleeping when he came home because they are in separate rooms she couldn't know where he was unless she passed him in the hallway and I like how Nellie's like like ships passing in the night okay so this is interesting yeah All right, so we think it's a crime of passion, right? Yeah. It doesn't sound like he came to murder Blake. No. But part of me wonders if he had been planning some kind of confrontation. Maybe not planning a murder, but... I wonder if he bought her a bigger ring on purpose. Maybe. Because he knew that she would get offended and that it would drive them to sleep in separate rooms. Maybe. That could be. I didn't even think about that. I mean, like I said, I don't think that he meant to kill him, but if Paige is in a different room and she can't track his movement, then that would, you know, that would be a good Mm -hmm. alibi, not really an alibi, but more of an excuse that he can't know if he's in bed next to her because they're sleeping in different Mm -hmm. rooms. So Yeah. yeah. It, interesting to think maybe i wonder if he did that on purpose <laughs> yeah and there was also a question about Paige possibly having an affair with blake so yeah that that gave good fodder for it mm-hmm. so what do you think do you think that there was ever any grounds for thinking that or mm. It's hard to tell. I mean, we know that their marriage was apparently on the rocks because mm-hmm. they were sleeping in two different rooms, but... Because of a ring. 
a ring size. I think it's possible what you said. Probably a crime of passion. He yeah. wasn't planning on killing Blake, but... Do you think that he planned something in advance? It's possible. At least a confrontation. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Huh. This Hard mystery just got a whole lot more mysterious than I thought it would. <laughs> yes. But Connor is the killer. You know, there's one person that we didn't talk about. Okay. Colleen, Colleen. the stepsister. What did you think about Colleen? I thought she did it. I did too at first. Yeah, like, I, I thought I thought that she was the murderer because she was trying to protect her stepsister. Yeah. At first, at first I thought it would be out of jealousy. Mm-hmm. I thought that it that it would be something like jealousy because you know, maybe she wanted Blake and they and you know, um Dahlia made a huge deal about she's not my sister, she's my stepsister. So you know, it was a possibility that Colleen killed Blake just to hurt Dahlia. So, but then I was really surprised by her behavior. She was getting overprotective and defensive yeah. for Dahlia. And I went, wow, yeah. that's, not, that's not guilty behavior. That's, yeah. I mean- it's okay let me let me let me strike that because it is guilty behavior Mm -hmm. but it's guilty behavior if you're the one that's done it and you don't want to see someone you love getting pinned with the murder so that was guilty behavior in that sense you know that she didn't want to see dahlia held responsible for her actions but it wasn't guilty behavior in the sense that she was trying to place it on her. Yeah. So, yeah. or she wasn't, if she had been trying to hurt Dahlia, then that would have been a whole different demeanor that we would have seen from her. Yeah. I have to say, with, you know, finding out who the killer was, which was Connor. I still don't understand his motive. Motive, yeah. Completely. I felt like there was a little bit of a plot hole to it. That yes, I, I agree. I when when Nellie said, wait, Connor saw him last because he's the killer. I went, hold on, whoa, whoa, huh, what? Huh? I I would say yes. I would I would consider that a bit of a plot hole mm-hmm. and something that just kind of fell through the cracks. Yeah. What? We we need to go back and revisit that a little bit and we mm-hmm. need to figure out what the motive is and what his motivations for that yeah. motive were. Yeah, I I didn't I didn't quite get that. And even on my second time around, it just didn't make sense to me. Yeah. So Yeah. That that's, that's why, why we need it. That's one of the biggest reasons we need a yes. sequel. You know, cuz Yes. When you're first starting out a series, mm-hmm. it can be really difficult when you're trying to establish the town and the characters and yeah. establish the all of the characters and establish the culprit and establish yeah. the suspects yeah. and establish the motive you know yes. so pilots of series can get tricky and yeah. so i think that it would be much easier to have a clear motive mm-hmm. in a second movie yeah. and you know the other fun part is, you know, these two have been work spouses yes. for years. Yes. It would be interesting to see, because I know that they have a lot of ideas and mm-hmm. that a lot of these ideas were put in yeah. to the characters. And so, I mean, what do the writers 
-hmm. and Kevin and Pascal themselves have in mind for how yeah. long they would make the fans wait before the two yeah. of them get together somehow, you know? Yes. So <laughs> yes. Yeah. I give Catherine, the writer, some grace because this is the first one in the yes. series. Yes. So. She is not she is not a well versed mystery writer. And so, you know, just this was her first mystery. She's trying yes. things out. And it was by no means unenjoyable. No, not just at all. Want a little bit more. <laughs> yeah. I just wish we had known the exact reason why yeah. Connor did it. And tied together a little bit more clearly. Yes, I agree. Moving into our highlights segment, are there any standout scenes that you want to mention? You mentioned the milkshakes. I yes. do love that scene, but I loved when they were having dinner together. I love that scene. That was a good scene and, too. Yes, because his obsession over pancakes, and I don't know if you noticed, but he's having pancakes with extra whipped cream. She's having tomato soup and grilled yep. cheese, both comfort foods. Yep. And so I thought, huh, they're both having comfort foods in this little time that they're having together. Is it because yeah. they're nervous and uncomfortable around each other? Or are they that comfortable with each other that they're having their comfort foods while it they could talk? Be either way. It could be. Yeah. So yeah. But I I really loved I really love that scene because it's when they start really deep talking yep. and yes. they they just get to know each other a little bit and Kevin's stuffing his face. Yep. <laughs> Those yep. were some big bites that he was cutting. Yeah. <laughs> I laughed when she's trying to have him tell her the typical. She's like, I want the typical. Give me the typical. <laughs> And then she says, after Michael responds to that, but you love my inside information. People tell me things. Yeah, she's, uh, you know, it almost, this would have been too campy. This would yeah. have been way too campy. But if they had done Nellie knows mysteries, yes. You know, I yeah, I mean that fits with her with her tapping of her nose and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which I have to wonder because Kevin's big mannerism that he's used in multiple movies is, you know, ding ding, and yeah. so. But she kind of does the side tap. I wonder yeah. if that's something that they came up with together, or. But, I wonder, yeah. If that had been in the title, that would have been too much. That would have been too mm -hmm. campy. Yeah. But when you're not reading the title and you're just saying it and all of that, you know, mm -hmm. I have a nose for this and her tapping yeah. her nose, you know, it it can get it can get funny because that's and she's so nosy, you know. Yeah. So it it just yeah, it would have been really funny to have them explore that even more. I mean, I yeah. think I think everybody got it. I think yes. everybody got it that Nellie knows mysteries and she's really nosy. But, yes. Uh, you know, but just to see that explored a little bit more and just see how nosy she can get, that that would be yeah. that would be fun to watch. Yes. Nosy like Rosemary in a loving way. There were so many similarities between yes. Nellie and Rosemary. And Rosemary, yep. So many similarities. Yes. I also love in that scene when, you know, she waves to a couple of people walking by their table and oh, he's yeah. like, do you know everyone? Everyone knows everyone in Babbleton. And then she starts showing him some of her magic. Yours truly feeling jelly intensely envious of his wife Darlene when she started getting attention at work and Michael says something about the woman he's sitting with and Nellie's like, yeah, like they, they, look, they look happy that's not Darlene oh <laughs> didn't that see that was, coming 
Yeah, that was a great conversation. Oh, it, it looks like those two crazy kids worked it out or something yes. like that. And yeah, then, that's exactly and then was. that's not Darlene. <laughs> Kevin is Kevin is the king of facial expressions. He really is. I yeah. love watching his reactions, his facial expressions, yeah. and just the way he finds so many different ways to yeah. say things. You know, and then watching his mouth, you know, how wide could it go open? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. It makes me wonder how many times did they do that scene? So was Kevin going, oh, enough, no more pancakes? Or was he saying, oh, yeah. yes, oh, I messed up that take. Sorry, need a fresh plate. Yeah. You know? yeah. Before I forget and we start to wrap up, I have to mention Fiona for a second. I loved yeah. the friendship between her and Nellie. Better get cracking. Yes. <laughs> Detective Dreamy. I love how she called Michael Detective Dreamy. I wrote that down too. Yep. Fiona calls him Detective Dreamy right there. Yes. <laughs> and then yeah, she Fiona looks like yeah. a solid a, a solid friend for, mm -hmm. for Nelly. Yep, she does. And I thought Veronica did a great job playing. She did. Fiona. She did fabulously. Yeah. One more scene that made me laugh with Michael and Nellie was when they're watching out for Jody. Jody is job hunting. And when Nellie walks up behind him, she says, Do you have your binoculars? <laughs> like, oh, you scared me half to death. <laughs> when Michael actually pulls out a magnifying glass because yep. she was telling him about it before. Yes. Yep. Love that. And then the end scene was great too, when Nellie has the cat. The kitty. <laughs> and they're talking about his promotion. And I love when Nellie says in response to him saying he's going to be in town for a while. Uh -huh. He's like single and ready to mingle and babble. To and he's like, oh boy. Oh, that's what you get when you start spending time with an advice columnist. That was another thing about Goodness. Rosemary is, you know, the letters are anonymous and she knows exactly who's mm -hmm. writing them. And so, and now here with Nellie, she yeah. knows exactly who's writing them, but she's trying to insist on the anonymity. You know, it's just, yes, it's so cute. It's so funny. Yes. I would very much like to see another one of these. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. Moving into our ratings to wrap up, what would you give this on a scale of five for mystery? Uh, out of five magnifying glasses? Yeah. There you go. Five <laughs> magnifying glasses. Okay. For the mystery itself, I probably have to give it a three. That's what I was going to say too. Yeah. Two and a half or three because the mystery was not the part that I enjoyed the most. And it was the yeah. part that was the foggiest for me. Yeah. The cast. So the oh. chemistry and dynamic with all the cast. Four and a half. Yeah. I was going to say five, but there you go. <laughs> four and a half is good too. And overall, 4.25. Okay. That's fair. I was going to give it four. There you go. Okay. We're four is good too. We're pretty close. Yes. Well, this was so much fun chatting yeah. about this mystery with you and collaborating. Yes. Sorry that Sarah couldn't be here, everybody. She yeah. got sick. She got sick and so she couldn't Aww. she couldn't collab with us. But Aww. that's why we have good friends like Nicole. Aww. <laughs> Well, it is always fun having you on. And if you're listening, Sarah, we missed you and hope you'll be able to join sometime in the future. <laughs> All right, Hardies. I think that wraps up our review of Nelly Knows Mysteries from the Swing My Heart podcast and the Hardies Hotline. If you enjoyed this episode and are watching on YouTube, you can like this video from my channel, the Swing My Heart Podcast, or the Hardy's Hotline, and share your thoughts about Nellie Knows Mysteries in the comments. 
If you are listening on Spotify, make sure to rate and review as your feedback is always greatly appreciated. If you want to stay up to date on all of our episodes from the Swing My Heart podcast or the Hardy's Hotline, you can subscribe to our channels and make sure to turn on the bell so you are alerted when new episodes come. Thank you so much for listening. We hope you have a wonderful day or night wherever you are in the world. And we will see you next time. We love y'all. Bye. Bye, guys.